coming up. Hello? Very sweaty nice head you got there. This is you and me now. You've got to understand that people are not black and white, they are grey. Oh. Who the fuck is grey? A lot of ladies, a lot of boys. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm straight. And so why I did you just say that? I've got pubic lice from banging a brass. I'm out of it. Uh, yeah. Nice it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Nice it, good lad. Okay, take a seat. Hi guys, how are you? Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hello. Very sweaty nice head you got there. Yeah. Sorry, uh, uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a sign to be here. Yeah, try not to knock. Sorry. Don't knock the table. The, ca- the microphone picks it up. Yeah. Who do you support then? Um, for, for f- football. Yeah, football is your team. Oh, I'm, I'm actually more of a rugby guy. Um, I don't, I don't really play a lot of football. Oh, all right, rugby. Um, uh, but I used to do a lot of uh, Harlequins. Um, all right, we'll move on. Oh, welcome back to the podcast. Bad Boys Done Good with me, Tony, and my pal Ray. Evening. Today we got a very special guest. Tom Hort, comedian, a mental health advocate. Tell us about yourself. Hi guys, uh, thank you very much for having me on. I'm trying to encourage men to get talking, to get the narrative out there that it's okay to not be okay, and together we can talk through our troubles. I don't understand how you can be not okay and okay at the same time because you're either one or the other. Sure, yeah, I think well, that West Ham is... lose two nil; they haven't won as well two nil. It's making people understand that because that's happened it does not mean you are a failure. It means that. You are, in fact, some of our strongest moments come in defeat and come from being weak. And you need to start looking at these, this vulnerability as a strength. And actually, these are where I learn our, we learn our lives lessons. And there is nothing stronger than a man who has rebuilt himself. I like that. That's, that's actually pretty good. I'm trying to rebuild myself. That's why we're on here. We talk about our past. Yeah. Some of the things we did, we had to do. You understand? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we work. If, we work from a code. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean. Mm-hmm. So somebody crosses the line, they got to be taken care of. How do you deal with uh, people who have had to do such a thing? I think pe- everyone... Talking who- about violence here. Sure, and I, th- I think it's for any circumstance. You ever hit anybody? Well, I've certainly had a few rugby matches where I, I definitely... I don't care about fucking rugby. I'm talking about business on the street. I've, I, I punched a guy once. Where was this? It was on my gap year in um, in um, um, in uh, Thailand, right. and um, it, it, we went to. A, did you know the Do you know the full moon party? Um, it's a it's a it's a party on the beach, and I, I just had a lot of cocktails. Jesus fucking Christ! And him and me were. Sure, it's all right, Tony. It's all right. Uh, well, I my uh, vices weren't actually violence was never my thing. Um, so uh, I did alcohol absolutely. How much were you drinking a day? Oh, I mean, I, I would go for, uh, there were weeks when I would be having drinks, you know, four or five times. Four or five times a week? Yeah, and that would lead to this cycle of uh, waking up and feeling un- hungover and feeling unmotivated. And then there were times where I realized that I was not picking up the phone to anyone and I hadn't been talking to my family or my loved ones. I remember um, one time waking up on, um, I was on the ca- on my couch and I had like 20 missed calls from my girlfriend and I woke up and saw pictures of my, a picture of my nephews and I'd missed their birthday. And I realized, um, you know, I'd chosen to go out and I'd chosen not to get drunk and I couldn't drive, obviously. So I, I had to miss uh, the, the birthday and they were, I, I took the FaceTime of them say, asking me, you know, where are you? And I, and it was seeing that that made me realize, hang on, I've, I've got a serious problem here. I need to change. And that was your rock bottom, missing were, a birthday. What were your guys' rock bottoms? I got pubic lice from banging a brass, right, after West Ham lost in the Carling Cup. I went down Mile End. I picked up a cheap brass, 20 quid, I think it was. Good value. And then Elaine got pubic lice. What would your... How would you make me feel better? 
the important thing is to understand what you've done. I think maybe talking to your your wife is, um, I think communication is the most important thing. And so you need to be cub- uh, owning your truth. You ever I, had you ever had pupil lice? You ever had anything like that to fucking drip? Uh, you know what we're talking about uh, here? No, I've, I've never had pubic lice, no. Because it's, it's not something you're going to talk about easily. It's not nice. These fuckers no, can sure. bite. Feel dirty. We need to get to the, the reason on why you are going out of your way to put yourself in this situation. Why is this... I wasn't going out of my way. It was on my way home. But you're... That we need to understand there is a moment in your life where you're choosing to do this action and why are you doing it? Where is that coming from? Are you actually using this as a escapism and a coping mechanism for something else that is missing with your life? Yeah. Uh, I had a few jars. I saw her. I had 20 pound. Yeah. There's no narrative. Is there any way you could... could why could you not be being intimate with your wife? She's at home. But you are, could you not have waited until you got home to do it with I her? I didn't want to. I wanted to fuck someone right now. I think a lot of what you're saying, all due respect, is bullshit. Now, I'm going to hear you out, but listen, I've been through it all. I remember I had to go out of the lamb. But Ricky caught the case. Feds were calling all over our ass. Had to go out of state. Two months. I didn't know whether I'd see my fucking kids again. Talk about rock bottom. Yeah, yeah that's it's, it's, diff- it's different it's, things. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. It's, I think this is exactly what the this is exactly what it's for. Just to be able to talk, and even if it can be awkward, it's it's good to it's good to get it out. I'm not awkward. I didn't mean you. I didn't mean you all. I just mean it, it can. Some people can find it hard. You to, seem to quite come out awkward. Um, well, I'm, I don't try and be. I, I think um, my personal issues, I would say, which I'm happy to talk about. I um, it started I, I, actually for me at boarding school when. Um, oh right, boarding school, very nice. There was it was an all boys boarding school, and a very very toxic environment. Um, Full of very high ego, it was very very bad. At, um, um, you, you weren't allowed to show vulnerability in any way, and I think um, what that leads to is a suppression of your feelings, and that is an internal struggle that you get that builds up. And over the years, you well, what happened to you? What, happened, what sort of things happened that was bad? Give us an example. I didn't. Well, I don't think it's any just one thing being bad. I think it's more a collection of. Give us emotion. one of those. Give one of the collection. I think um, one example, just you know. Well, I think I I came from a background of having a very successful father, who then, who then, um, nice for you. There are many benefits to it, but I think also in many ways it also puts pressure on you to be a high achiever as well. And um, I ended up building up quite a lot of resentment for my father because of the pressure it put on me. And there were so many opportunities that I would then rebel against him um, because it was sort of a protest against. Are your parents still together? Uh, yes, they're still together. Oh, but, sounds uh, terrible. Huh. I, I, <laughs> so you went to a boarding school. You had a successful father. Where's the problem been? What he's trying to say is maybe you're not an authority to judge. We're trying to make this for everybody. Okay. Yeah. You've obviously had a life. You come from uh, you know, certain privileges. This is for the everyday guy, the average Joe, who's dealing with all this fucking bullshit, and they don't they yeah. don't have a, they don't have an outlet. Like for, for for me myself personally, I got demons. I've done things uh, that keep me up at night, and I'm asking you, how do I stop the demons? I mean, he killed a geezer last week. What can he do? What can you do for him now to help him feel better? Allegedly. You shouldn't have to blame yourself for the situations you were put in. I think sometimes you are just a victim of circumstance. And I don't know how, I don't know the details of how you knew this character and what went through. But at the end of the day, most of the time, people are acting in a way of self survival, in a way to try and do the best thing in the greater picture. And 
Um, so he's a victim. Yeah, well, I think it's important to understand that this has happened, but you need to move on because if you don't move on, then you are just you. Something positive can come from this. Well, that's that's what I wanted to hear because sometimes I go around and pity for myself. Mm. Mm. All these people out there. They don't know what it was like for us growing up. The decisions we had to make, it was, it was kill or be killed. Growing up in Jersey, when we did, I I'm, think, just, I'm getting a bit emotional now because I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about incidents that could have been avoided, physical altercations, people, friends of us left in uh, intensive care. And it's, it's nice to know that I'm the victim. Tony hasn't missed a birthday party. He's actually ended someone's capacity to have a birthday. And I'm, what sort of steps are you using now to help yourself heal? Because I think that is one of the biggest things you can do is treating yourself well. Mm. It's not blaming yourself. You need to start getting yourself into a routine that works. You need to exercise properly. You need to not be doing substances and narcotics. You need to be giving yourself a purpose that is Ooh. beyond and stepped away. Substance. I smoke cigars. I have a fucking scotch. You tell me I can't do that now. I'm How, sh in limitations, you don't, you don't sure. know me. You don't know, with, with the greatest respect. I don't know how the food can affect the. The food doesn't make your brain do right. the stuff. It doesn't make your hands shoot the gun. Do you know what I mean? I think actually there have been quite a few modern studies that say that our brains and our stomachs are, are connected, and it's actually our stomach is oh, is go. actually in charge of um, our own mental health more than we'd ever actually imagined. Our stomach. If, because if you're if you're filling yourself um, with bad food, you know, burgers, chips, fast food, you're not giving yourself the vitamins and the minerals and the effect that it can have on your body. We didn't have chefs like you might have done. Sometimes we had to fend for ourselves and eat what we could. Right, so I find this I find this offensive. Mm, stomachs, the stom I don't. Yeah, I mean the stomachs there, the brain's I'm up always, there. I'm watching my weight. You can see that. Yep, you look great. Um, Don't fucking lie to me. It sounds like he's he's uh, he's he's placating you there. Because Ray, Ray, it's like you wouldn't believe. He's 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 uh, well, he, and he's up at eight. Listen, I feel I'm sixty six years old, right? I have a full English for breakfast. I have a full English for lunch, and I have half a full English and half a Chinese for tea, uh, an Alexa Chung, as I call it. And I feel fantastic. Because there is also this new um, diet. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this sort of intimate fasting. where you Intimate can, fasting? Yeah. Uh, you can um, you, you wake up and you can not eat until maybe 6 p.m. that evening. Why would you do that? Well, because I think your body then gets used to it, it's, um, expelling all the bad substances and chemicals that you've built up. And it's a, it's basically it's a, it's a flushing out of the system of all the potentially harmful chemicals and vitamins and that sort of thing. Right. So, um, and then you could also try a keto diet. Can you go closer to the mic? Sorry. Don't Was touch it? the mic. I mean, how, uh, how, how? Keep your hands down. No, down. Yeah. On the table. Keep them down. When you touch. On the table. Keep your hands face down on the table because when you move around, you did it again. Sorry. If you move right. around, it affects the microphone levels. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm right. sorry. It means that when we, when uh, the when someone is listening to the pod, it's I hear the noise, don't I? Um, I um, I I what I was saying was that I um, fucking spit it out. I think our stomachs and our uh, and our brains are connected. Um, intimately on a level that we're only fully beginning to understand right now. I don't want to so, fuck my stomach, okay? Yeah, this intimate stomach. Intimate. We're talking about men, the issues men face and how we overcome them. Right. We're expanding the conversation because there's stigma around men's mental health. That's why we're here. There's no other fucking reason. The stigma about mental health for men, right? Women, they can talk about their feelings. They can cry anytime they want. They don't we fucking can't. stop. We can't. So we've, 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 we've established that Tony's actually the victim when he's hurt a geezer. There's a lot of stuff that he hasn't processed, deep down. But now you're talking about his stomach bollocks. What does that mean? So you're saying that if I'd eaten more fruit on the set of Sexy Beast, I wouldn't have banged the makeup girl? 
I mean, what was your diet at the time? Meat, a lot of meat and bread. I mean, there are lots of studies that say that meat isn't actually an overly over meat diet is actually a negative effect on the body. And well, does I, it make your dick go hard when it shouldn't? Does it make you want to bang everything that moves? Because that's how I that's how I live my life. Um, I think red meat has been linked to actually a lot of infertility. Um, Jesus Christ. Well, I can tell you now, I ain't got that problem. But maybe the diet's, maybe why the diet's don't we, okay. Why don't we change the conversation, okay? Ask me about my trauma, my pain. Sure. Um, okay. So when, when, was the, when was the first... I made a fucking drink. When, when, was the, when was the first time that you think in your life that you can... Let's go back to the start. When did you feel like uh, maybe you were coming into negative influences or you had people who were maybe toxic in your life? I had a lot of issues growing up, authority figures, people in my life that did have the best interest for me. From a young age, I was aware of it. Mm -hmm. There was nobody to talk to, nobody to reach out to. And I'm now in a situation where you're encouraged to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, might, I don't want to talk about it all the time. You understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you see these things about, you know, people want to see a girl boss winning. But what about the boss of a fucking family? We do, um, um, cry therapy. What the fuck are you trying to say? Well, so it's a therapy that w would help you if you, if you, if we provide a safe environment where you can, um, we allow it, and scream therapy as well. Um, one of the activities we do is we go into a forest and people, we stand by in some trees and we yell out into the world and we just talk about our pain and we shout it out to the world and vocalizing it then um, can give a sense of alleviation and making it real. Right. So there's all this hippie bollocks now, is there? The results speak for themselves. Listen, I when I go to a forest, it's for one thing or one thing only. I don't want to get into specifics. I think you know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, do you fuck it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what goes down in woodland areas for guys like me? So I find your line of question and deeply offensive. And that's the fact you're bringing a forest to a guy like myself on a platform that's going to get viewed on on the uh, social internet. Okay, you know about the web. Yeah, I'm familiar with the web, the web because this goes out. So make sure you choose your words wisely because this is about men's mental health. It's about talking it out, and I think that, with facts. I think the I think the frustration you're feeling and you're expressing now, I would want to say at the moment it, it is valid, and you should know that it's valid. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. And listen, I, I I went a bit too hard on you earlier. Okay, I apologize. That was uncalled for. You seem like a good kid, okay? In fact, I don't need. Uh, that's very kind, but I don't. I'm, Take the money. That's good. Uh, thank you. You were saying when I banged the brass and got the pubic lice and gave that to my wife, am I the victim? Uh, yeah. Sure. Fantastic. I'm just waiting for that siren to go past. Coming for you. Still get the, uh, still get that surge of adrenaline tone whenever I hear a siren. Of course. I remember watching a geezer, um, with a mop. He, 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 he bludgeoned a kid to death with a mop. Just smacked him over there. And then people would come out in any old shite, they'd come out with, you know, broomsticks and... What do you know about cleavers that? Cleavers and handles and all, all sorts, pipe. You just grab whatever you could and just get just get it on a mill wall. Get it on a mill wall. That was a, and I saw a geezer getting bludgeoned to death with a mop. It was funny at the same time. I couldn't I was laughing. This mop. You ever see a mop ending someone's life? You ever seen a mop ending someone's life? Um I'm, no, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not seeing that now. Is it upside down now to the world we grew up in? Mm. And all the logic that we had, if you're upset 
you go out, you get geared up, you glass some Millwall, come home, have a pack of custard creams, be a bit shit to the wife, hit the sack, tomorrow's another day. I, I, stoicism has its place in um, in in society, I think, in, in, many, in multiple ways. Um, but I think, as I said, all the studies that have been made in this area show that young men especially are actually internalizing so much and they're really desperate to have role models as well to have people that they look up to like yourselves i think as you know you have a very big fan base both of you i've, I've seen um and i've seen some of your work over the years you have people that really look up to you and i think um not just as literal father figures but also just as just admiration in general and i i mean sure over the years you must have felt that pressure mm. i feel it every day when you're the boss it all ends with you mm. i mean you know what i'm talking about and how often do you take time in a day to just say to yourself i'm not the boss and i don't need to be and that's not the role i need to play i can just be tony and that's fine let me explain to you a few things. When you're the boss, you don't stop being the boss. You take it to the fucking grave. I made an oath, a pledge. I'm a soldier. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I'm Don't look at the fucking notes. This is you and me now. Eyes up. Look at me. I'm the boss of a family. So we could talk about shouting in the forest. We could talk about speech therapy, watching an intimate stomach, whatever the fuck. Don't look at the fucking notes. Look at me. Talk to me. You're doing a good job. Also, when I was at when I was at boarding school, there was a there's a there's a hierarchy within the boarding houses, and you had 18 year old kids uh, also. Um, being able to put put in charge of thirteen year old boys, there's a very big uh, jump there, and mm. they were allowed to inflict physical punishments on us, and they were allowed to um, really they, um, it sort of builds you up as a man at that age. It's a very toxic um, act to have. We're toxic. talking about the negative aspects. I think anywhere that's saying that violence is the first option or any sort of um, uh, physical effect on people or mental i mean we we used to uh, in the boarding houses i remember i got um if we got caught we used to um get rugby balls uh kicked to our legs in the playground <laughs> you listen to this rugby balls yeah. when i was growing up in jersey we used to get hit with bats we're coming from different paths you and me but that's okay yeah, yeah well, I mean, i'm talking now about real life when you're in this boarding house, tell us about the violence you experienced. We, we didn't have, uh, well, bats were, we really did cricket in the summer. So you played polio at boarding school, did you? We played polo at boarding school, yeah. That's the all season the sticks and all that sort of stuff. But it, there's, well, there's multiple ways of playing, but there's, uh, there's the one with the horses, there's also water polo. Right, so there was horses there, water, all sorts of nice space not to get no the, the horses weren't in the water right they, it was, were, two, they were two different so things. the horses were on grass yeah or, you know, on a polo pitch a polo pitch yeah right and then were you were boys all riding about playing a game so so the idea is you're, you're on horseback and there's a you have your polo stick and you're and the, and the, the ball and you're trying to get it in the other person's net so i saw when i was scrapping with the west Ham boys i saw a horse get shanked and I saw another another horse got nicked. You see the difference. I found the polio. Uh, yeah, I think um, especially in the changing rooms and stuff, it was quite a toxic environment. Actually, why do you keep saying this word toxic? What is toxic? Uh, oh, it's more attitude. people keep saying it to me. I don't understand what he means. They say my behavior, my attitude is toxic. So I'm asking you, do I look toxic to you? I think everyone has the ability to be toxic and I think it's important to be aware of that. And so if you looked at certain areas of your life that maybe could be improved, it's how you're affecting others, how it's, you're affecting the My toxicity has helped me become an effective business leader. He's a millionaire. Well, so is he. Yeah. Fucking, it was given to you. 
I had to fight for it. But I think actually one of the biggest problems that I Patreon, by the way, just to remind you, very much appreciated. Three pounds. Quite often, I think some of the most lost people in society are people who have given been given every possible door as an option, and therefore the agony of choice and and that. too many doors. That's a disease, is it? I think the pressure that it gives you to try and be your own person and to try and find a life outside of the shadow of, um, you know, a father or a mother figure or something that's given you all this, that can lead to a lack of self-worth and a feeling like if you have been gifted... There's a lot of talking, isn't there? He does a lot of talking. I don't understand what he's saying. It's all, it's all like poetry or something. Let's switch this up a bit. Maybe talk in a way we can understand. Let's talk about some vices, okay? We've all got them. Right. What are your vices? Maybe the whores. Um, I definitely, I found myself, uh, I think drinking was a big thing for me. I used to. And the whores. I, I, um, I, I definitely would, there would, uh, I would find myself a lot of times out on a night out, maybe something like Infernos, Embargoes. Um, Embargo? The shit. It's a, yeah, a club in Clapham. So anyway, I work in the Bing. I'm around a lot of women. A lot of ladies, a lot of boys. Oh, yes. That's my vice. You understand? Mm -hmm. I know you're a good looking kid. Thank you. Maybe you've got some experiences with uh, broads that didn't go too well. How can you, uh, how, how can we as men deal with the uh, rejection from a, a beautiful woman? Because that's always hard. I think rejection with women is definitely one of the hardest things possible. Like if there was a specific broad that you met, educated, smart, smart as a fucking whip, mm. but she ain't giving you the time of day. So right, kicking the fucking diamond all bones. What would you do about that? I think sometimes and someone you've been speaking to on and off for years. I think sometimes it, it's it's looking at the situation and being honest and realistic about it and then going, look, if, if this particular woman is not wanting what you are wanting at that same time, that does not mean you're a failure. That just means that the circumstances it's, are... It's because I'm a married man. There's an issue oh, there. Oh, you're, you're, you're married just, when you're... I'm yeah. saying in this situation. Well, I think you should ask, well, why are you wanting to be with someone else if you're a married man? You don't want to fucking explore? You don't like women? You bet. For the other team on that. It's a, a good question. I, mean, I, I identify as a, as a cis, Ident cis man. What? You what? Identify? Yeah, um, a cis, yeah so I, I'm straight. And so why I, did you just say that? What's a cis? What uh, is cis? No, but there, are cert there are certain people who, and it's becoming more and more, more aware now, that they do not identify in the body with the sex that they were assigned at birth. I don't want to get gender. bogged down in this. This is about men specifically. Right. There's men and there's women. We know that there's men and women. We're here for the men, talking about men. You understand? We're bringing awareness. We're bringing awareness to the conversation, men's mental health. Yes, but... Don't confuse our listeners with cis. So do you, do you bang birds or geezers? Um, I, uh, I am attracted to f uh, females. Would you bang them though? I've had relationships. Um, when was the last time you you fucked someone? Good question. I am. Um, well, I've been, I've been seeing my girlfriend uh, for. Uh, it wasn't what he we, asked. We try and uh, get a, maintain a healthy relationship, and so therefore, uh, it's important. I think every week to take time out of your schedule. Once a week. To, <laughs> okay, now. So we're talking we're, about we're, we're, talk, we're talking about relationships now. Because that's something that I do to let off some steam. You understand? Uh, you know, I go to the horses. I, I eat a meal. I take out a beautiful broad. You encourage men to talk. I got to ask you. Do you encourage men to fuck? We wouldn't give any advice specifically on how to... Be intimate with I don't mean the fuck. I don't mean the ins and outs of fucking. I mean, you like a broad, you want to connect with a broad. How do you do it? Because mental health, um, sex, having a good fuck, that's good for mental health. I've never felt, I mean, I can't keep it in my pants. 
But I feel fucking fantastic after. Right. Yeah. And I've been on, I've done 57 films and I've cheated on a lane on every single one. But after the initial guilt, I feel fucking fantastic. That's a good point. How do you deal with the guilt? Because that's something that as men, particularly Ray and myself, yes. I get a lot of guilt. I feel a lot of shame. And over the years, it seems to have increased. All yeah. these, uh, I feel like I got yeah. specters, you know, spirits around me for the for the sins of my past. It keeps me up at night. Some of the stuff I've been involved in, some of the stuff I've seen. So my question to you is, how do you deal with the guilt I of think, your past? Yeah, I think it's very, very tough, isn't it? I think, um, and I think one of the first steps is accepting the fact that that is a valid emotion. Well, I accept it. I'm talking about. I think you need to start um, coming to terms. Yeah, um, I think you need to put the stepping stones in place where you are putting yourself in a hell. A lot of it wasn't down to me. So don't do the poetry again. Stick it in real terms for us, please. Stepping stones, that's a gardening term. How do I go to sleep at night? Guilt, how do you do it? Just give us some... I think one of the best ways to get to sleep, if you are having sleeping problems, and that's very common amongst uh, uh, men who are struggling, you need to get yourself a routine. And uh, for me, it was, you know... No routine, what are we, in the fucking can? Well, I think th things like, you know, no phone or TV after 8 o'clock, making sure you are well rested, making sure you're going to bed at the same time every night. Um, then reading a book. What do you think? I'm book. a kid. I'm not a kid. Also, I go to bed when I go to bed. I cheat on my wife, and that isn't a, a regular time. Well, I think I think she'd try her hardest, probably not to be being intimate with other people. If um, you're trying to get, if that's what, if that's the problem, then I think. Well, no. Let's let's take that out. That's going to happen. All right. I work right. in show business. I'm doing movies. I've done a film with Mark Wahlberg. The women, there's women. There's always women. Is it, so that's not going to change. Right? It, I'm always going to be fucking. How do I then feel better about myself when the guilt starts nibbling away? Huh. The little voices come out. When I hear Elaine snoring, I feel guilty. It's like little demons, isn't it, Tony? <clears throat> How do I feel better about myself? How do I feel better? Give me a sedative. A thought, I'm, something I can think about to feel better, to feel all right about what I've done. Because it's okay to not be okay. Right? Yeah. Um, people say that a lot. I think you've got to understand that people are not black and white, they are grey. Who yeah. the fuck is grey? I don't mean literally grey. I mean, um, I mean uh, morally uh, grey. I think maybe start firstly asking yourself, why is it do you feel the need to sleep with so many people is that because i maybe enjoy you are, it uh, but are you p perhaps maybe trying to fill a void of something else in your life like not getting enough um, have you talked to your wife about your intimacy with her i mean how often are you in talk her? to my wife <laughs> about that <laughs> yeah i mean I'm, I, maybe uh, from another generation. Do you know how she might be feeling, whether or not her needs are being What's met? all these she... feelings? So much feelings. Why does it all have to be about feelings? What about physical feelings, right? What what men do is going to happen. I don't know about you, you have your one fuck a week with your bird, right? That's fine, that's enough for you. I like to fuck every day. I enjoy it. That's not going to change. How do I feel better at night? Um, in terms that I can understand, please. None of that poetry, boarding school bollocks. No stepping stones. No, it's okay to not feel okay. No toxic this, toxic that. I want to know how I can feel better about banging other women. Tonight. Um, this better be good. I, have you tried... Um um, the car map. What's that? This fucking guy. What's a car map? It's a it's a meditation device you can do. You can you you can get to like sleeping headphones that you can wear, and it it it's good. It can give you sort of soothing right. m music. Meditation. 
meditation. Do I look like a fucking hippie? The meditation and breathing as exercise is a, a breathing. Problem. Yeah, you can you can try breathing. I exercises. think breathing sort of happens. I don't know about you, Tony, but I sort of breathe a lot of the time while well, breathing. You breathe. You breathe differently to us. I've certainly got a lot of um, breathing. I've done some breathing coaching. It's good work if you can get it there. Yeah. Breathing, breathing yeah. workshops. Guys charge you for breathing. It's good money, that. Good what? money to be made in How breathing. How much is it for a, a four-breath session? <laughs> well, for, our, for our dropping sessions for breathing, it's How between... much is it uh, for a, a half a day of breathing? Is it the same to breathe in as breathe out? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> That's funny. Um... You charge for a tank we don't, of um, breathing of air. No, no, the air is just um, sort of I'm the air. Just, I'm the room. just joking. It helps people like it when we have a joke. I mean, well, well I, I could, I could talk you both through some. It was some, a pretty good scene. joke, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you feel about how this just went. Probably a bit different to so many yeah. other places you go. It's been, uh, it's, it's been an experience. What's been your sure. favorite part? Um, I've, uh, it's, it's all been really, I think any point, um, how just getting the dialogue out there. And, um, I, I didn't actually know, I, I didn't know how you contacted me. That it was a surprise, but it's been very, I don't know. They do it here. I'm sort of a little bit they confused. Something about the process here is we don't, with the talent, they get us in and they tell us, we don't even know in advance who's coming. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know who you were, but it's been nice. You seem like a good guy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the, the pod. Thank you.